A big deal has been made about the graphics for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and only rightly so. Part of the interest for this isn't just the beautiful visuals, but also the capability to allow for visual flight rules, that's navigating planes by sight. However, that's only a part of the true flight experience. Sobo Studios, in their latest Discovery Series video, discuss another much-requested form of navigation, instrument flight rules. So let's jump in then and take a look at how Flight Simulator 2020 manages IFR. To start with then, both the Sobo and Microsoft have made a big deal about all the companies that they are partnering with in order to deliver the best simulator experience. For navigation, one of those partners is NavBlue, who provide a flight simulator with access to a database for the official AIRAC cycle. This contains all the currently relevant data for navigational waypoints, as well as approach and departure patterns for airfields and airports, in addition to com frequencies, details for restricted airspace, and much, much more. In short, everything you need to know in order to safely navigate around the world. This data is updated on a 28-day cycle and is also used in the real world. Now, some people will no doubt be wondering how you start your journey in Flight Simulator. Many might assume that you always begin on a runway somewhere. The truth is, you can begin your flight anywhere you want, whether that's on the ground or in the air. Your start point then can be selected via the world map, which has a searchable list of locations. You can also choose a destination here if you so wish. The sim will then calculate a route for you based upon the data you have entered, and this route will change depending on the type of flight that you choose. For example, low altitude or high altitude, or indeed whether you would prefer to opt for a visual flight route or an instrument-based one. Further, waypoints along the route can be manually edited, as can your altitude if you so wish. So when routes are generated, Asobo wanted to make them as close to real life a route planning as possible. To achieve this, Flight Simulator takes many different factors into account, and this even includes ILS, VOR, and RNAV approaches. There's a short breakdown explaining each of these further into the video. And once you've generated a flight plan, you can save this for later use. Alternatively, you can also load in a flight plan, which would suggest that you will be able to share these online. With an entire world to explore, there's no doubt going to be some very interesting flight plans shared by the community then. Once you're inside the sim, the flight route you, that you generate will be available inside your plane and accessible via the aircraft's instruments. If you desire, the flight plans can be edited from here, or indeed you can create completely new ones. Asobo's previous video on airplane cockpits highlighted how much work has gone into keeping these accurate, and that extends of course to the plane's dashboards, which have an accurate and extensive range of nav panels. From here, you'll have access to ILS, that's the instrument landing system, which will give you accurate approach data to any runway. And this is especially important when you have no visual information for the approach, such as in this video clip, where visibility appears to be more or less zero. VOR, that's very high frequency omnidirectional range, is a form of radio navigation. And this is also available for use. The plane's location can be determined from these signals, which are emitted by a network of radio transmitters. It's a system that is much older than GPS, but nonetheless one which is popular and considered to be very reliable. Airliners, meanwhile, naturally have access to a rather complex looking flight management system in the form of the plane's CDU, that's the uh, Control Display Unit, or the MCDU, that's the Multifunctional Control Display Unit. A more traditional form of navigation can be done via radio by using ADF, that's Automatic Direction Finding, which is provided by a radio broadcast from non-directional beacons on the ground. Now, this will be readily available in all planes, but is especially noticeable in the Cessna 152, with its slightly less modern, shall we say, aesthetics. While it's not strictly related to navigation as such, a live weather radar is also available in some planes, which will give you an overview of weather conditions that you'll be facing en route. 
Now, one of the more popular questions that has been asked over the past months has been about ATC and how it works in the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. The latest video goes into some detail to explain this. ATC then covers ground control, which will monitor and direct taxi and to and from runways. This is fully simulated, with the pilot having the ability to request clearance from ground services, and you will have noticed that clearance for IFR can also be requested. The tower, meanwhile, will provide clearance for takeoff and landing. ATC is fully voiced using Microsoft's Azure AI generated voices. Full autopilot is also available from the moment that you are in the air, which is fully capable of auto navigating through each waypoint and taking you right up to your destination. As for interacting with ATC, there's a great segment right here that highlights the interaction between the pilot and ATC, so yep, it does indeed appear to be a very well simulated. But if interacting with the ATC really isn't your thing, and you would instead to prefer avoid that altogether, then ATC interaction can be handed over to the co-pilot who is uh, well, completely AI, and they will do all of this for you on your behalf, freeing you up to focusing on just piloting. Sobo have also pointed out previously that you are not alone in the sim world and that other planes, both AI and player, are present. This naturally creates a lot of air traffic which needs to be managed and there's a very real possibility that you can interfere with this in unintended or negative ways. For example, if you land without first requesting landing clearance from ATC, then you will mess with the current air traffic situation as they will then have to change their landing and takeoff plans. Meanwhile, the plans with the capability can auto land, or alternatively, you can enable autopilot right up until the last moment and then land the plane yourself. So then, as you can see, there's a huge amount going on here, and really, this is just an overview of how IFR will work. Now, the fact that uh, each of the planes have been accurately uh, modeled uh, for all of this means that learning a plane in depth will be an involved experience. And meanwhile, for those who are already having knowledge of these planes, well, they should feel right at home here. As for the airliners, these are without a doubt going to be complex beasts, and I know there's a lot of people out there who will highly be anticipating that. But just the same, there are plenty of people, myself included, who will be much more at home on the smaller planes. Now, one thing that is still an open question for many people is just how extensive the flight model is. Unfortunately, videos really aren't something that can do justice to demonstrating the flight model, at least not without a few hours of footage, or at least in-depth analysis of such. Nonetheless, demonstrating the flight model is something that the Sobo Studios have yet to do. And whilst they have revealed information on the aerodynamics and the like, they still haven't publicly shown a really good analysis on, the, on a full flight. That said, it is possible to distill some new details from the latest video, and this is especially noticeable on takeoff, where you can see a number of uh, corrections being made by the pilot, as well as on landing, where we get to see the effects of the environmental conditions on the plane's wings. Just look at that. Again, how this translates to hands-on experience isn't easy to say from the clips. However, it does highlight that there appears to be plenty going on here. Beyond the mechanics of the sim then, the video once again showed some awesome graphics, and the part I really did enjoy, which I showed right at the beginning of the video, but we'll look at again here right now, was the descent through the clouds on the final approach to the runway. Visually stunning, showing not only the great graphics, but also the use of IFR in action, and amply demonstrating why flight instruments are so valuable. That then brings us to an end of this video. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys and girls next time.